I am so excited to have in studio the CEO, the co-founder of Kajabi, Kenny Reader. Welcome to The Playbook. Thanks for having me. This is the first time I've taken my sweatpants off in like months. How but cool this is, is great. this? I get to use, I mean, we're socially distanced, kind of like, you know, Bill Maher's set up here. Huge background. I'm so excited. Now, you are in a very exciting space. Uh, we're dealing with this space a lot, not just for us. Uh, as clients, but more importantly, so many people need what you do, yeah. but you're not an overnight success. You know, one of the things is, especially now with the pandemic, so many companies have been around a decade yeah. and somehow you really hadn't heard of them and all of a sudden you need them more than you need water. Yeah. Um, what was your vision 10 years ago with Kajabi? Because you definitely were before your time. Absolutely. Yeah. Founded the company 10 years ago and, and it was really just to solve a problem that I had. I was a, a software developer by trade looking for something entrepreneurial for myself. You know, I had a young family at the time and I just wanted to be in control of my own destiny. And so I was always looking for extra ways to make money on the side. And hopefully one of those would turn into a business. And, and it's kind of funny of all of the places I looked for a business where it came from. And I was building a toy for my kids. I had three small children at the time and I built them the sprinkler toy uh, out of PVC pipe that plugged into the hose and it sprayed water down. And uh, for, for a minute there, I thought, hey, maybe I'm gonna manufacture these things and sell them. And I realized that's way too hard to do a physical products business. So I'm like, I wanna shoot some videos, teach other parents how to build this with their kids and then sell them online. And I thought that would be easy. And I had never tried to sell videos before. And I realized there was nothing back then, 10 years ago, to, to put together a little online course and teach something it was impossible. So I said, okay, this is what I wanna do. This is the business. And then that evolved into the business within the business business because more people started selling online and Absolutely. you started being the expert on, wait a second, I got to help all the other people that are doing these tutorials or funnels and other things that exist online. Yeah. Well, I mean, way back then, I was like, this is much bigger than a sprinkler toy, right? <laughs> so right. I'm like, I'm going to build a software as a service platform to let other people do this. And that's, that's how it all started. And then now, you know, we were ahead of the curve, I think a little bit, and now it's, it's becoming commonplace. Lots of people want to sell their knowledge and we're just right place at the right time. Absolutely. Now, one of the biggest questions that entrepreneurs have is you're an engineer, you're a lawyer, some sort of professional, well-educated with a family, and yet you start this thing and there becomes a point where you have to make a decision. I'm all in. Yep. Yep. You know, where did you make that decision and when was the right time to make that decision for you? Yeah, for me, it, it I would love to say, I just, I knew it was going to work and I quit everything <laughs> yeah. and started, went all in, but I, I kind of had this soft landing. I, I was working with a, a brokerage firm, a futures and commodities brokerage firm in Chicago, and I, I could kind of make my own hours. And so I was, I was keeping that income going while I was building Kajabi and it was, it was really nice. And so by the time I said, okay, I'm all in on Kajabi, uh, you know, it was, it was right there. It was ready to launch and, and we were good to go. And beyond that too, having a family, I have four children, mm -hmm. you have three teenagers uh, as yeah. well. I just got the girls, you got the boys, we should get them together. Absolutely. <laughs> but more importantly, I find one of the greatest challenges beyond when do I you know, move over from my side hustle to yeah. how do I balance my life? Yeah, that, that was a big, big discussion back then with my wife and, and I remember when I told her hey, I want to start this company. And she's like, okay, that's great. But can you wait until our youngest, his name is Jonah. Can you wait till he's in kindergarten? It's just hands full right now. You're working from home. And I was like, yeah, I'll see what I can do. And then a couple of weeks later, I'm like, I have to do this. And so I just went and signed a lease for, <laughs> for an office. So it, it, was, it was constantly that, you know, I had been at home working for nine years prior to building the company. And so it was a big, big shift. And now the other shift went back the other way that your family's at home all the time yeah. with the pandemic, and yet you're running this incredible business. What challenges have you faced in the reverse of what was happening? Yeah, I mean, the reverse now, we're up to 200 employees, but we're all remote and and this isn't a remote first company, at least it traditionally wasn't. And so it's, yeah, I mean, just like everybody else probably in America and the world has had to deal with, you know, the remote aspect and the Zoom meetings and all of that. Um, it's really hard, you know, our headcount doubled over this COVID period, doubled. So there's people that have never seen an office, you know, has have never met anybody else from Kajabi in person. And so that's really crazy to manage. And going forward after the 
the vaccines and the pandemic uh, subsides, how do you think you'll reorganize? And I think a lot of people don't talk about repurposing and reorganizing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is one of the expertise that I have as a business coach, because I think we can't ignore the fact that there has to be some sort of counterbalance that's going to occur. Yep. What are you planning to do? My employees will love to to watch this because they're asking me that same thing, you know. So I would. Yeah, I, mean, I promise if, them no hard questions. <laughs> yeah, if I could snap my fingers, it just goes back to how it was, and we're in the office every day. Uh, but I just don't think the world's going to be like that anymore. And 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 we've done lots of surveys with our employees, and the question keeps coming up: Well, what's life going to look like afterwards? You know, are we going to be able to be hybrid? Are we going to? What about those of us that just want to stay home and don't want to go back to the office? So th these are all questions that we're trying to to really figure out good answers to. So I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle. I think we're going to have some options, you know, and, and realize that a lot has worked remote. You know, it's not like we're dead in the water. We're growing like crazy. And so I think I think we're going to adopt some of that. And uh, but I, I still love our office down the street here. And so I would love it if most of us were there. I'm with you. And that's why I was so glad that you were able to actually come into the studio. It's like yeah. made my entire day. I was missing the Super Bowl, <laughs> couldn't be there. And then here I have this unbelievable executive coming in to share the day with me, which is amazing. Um, but moving forward as well, one of the I think misguided impressions. There's so many uh, entrepreneurs that are engineers mm -hmm. and I hear it all the time. Well, engineers, they have great innovation, but they don't have any business sense. They don't know how to scale. They're not good operators. Yeah. I disagree. First of all, Thank like you. I think <laughs> I, I do. And because I'm probably around so many entrepreneurs, I think, you know, entrepreneurship itself, starting a business uh, is a journey of experience. And whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, or your dad was, you know, Thomas Edison, the ultimate entrepreneur, because yeah. <laughs> he took no 10,000 times before he invented <laughs> exactly, electricity, exactly. which seemed to be a pretty good invention, by the way. Um, I think it's a learned trade. Yep. And so what skill sets did you take over from being an engineer that you felt were uh, great assets of starting a business? Yeah. And which ones did you feel where there were voids or shortages from your experience? Great question. I, I think at the beginning, it was a big positive to be an entrepreneur because I could do things myself. I could iterate quickly. I didn't have to, you know, so many people that start a company and they're outsourcing development work at the beginning, they have to, you know, wait for changes or they have something in their head, but they can't get it to prototype and I could just do it all myself. And so I would stay up all night and just hack away. And, and so that was a positive of being an engineer. The negatives, you know, I, I've had to learn so much. I mean, business and entrepreneurship and accounting. I mean, I was wearing all the hats at the beginning, you know, and, and so all of that, it's just a, a big learning lesson, you know, and now scaling a company and, and the HR aspects and the people aspects and all of that, uh, you know, the engineering background didn't really train me for any of that. And even to that point, the hardest thing I always say about being an entrepreneur and being a successful one, uh, as you build up to a couple hundred employees and then a couple thousand uh, is employees and overhead. Yeah. Uh, and understanding yeah. corporate culture, no matter who you are and what your background are, what yeah. are some of the things, lessons that you've learned to create such a great uh, corporate culture like you have at Kajabi, especially consider half your employees have never been in your office? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, hiring, I surrounding myself with gr great talent. You know, I don't, I don't even attempt to be the smartest person in the room at all. No ego about it. I want to hire great people that have done it before that are just, you know, good human beings that can help run this company. And so, and that's what we've done. And we try to not take ourselves too seriously and we try to have a fun atmosphere. And, and really, I think overall, it's the mission of the company though, that, that is really the guiding star for the, the uh, employees. It's, it's we are helping spoon feed success to our customers and, and our customers are really the most important part of our entire company. And so, it means something to be an employee at Kajabi because you're affecting these people's lives. And you've scaled quite aggressively in the last yeah. 12 months. Um, to scale, do you have any piece of advice that you'd give yourself if you knew the pandemic was gonna <laughs> hit that you would have told yourself in March? I wish I could go back and, and tell myself some things. Yeah, I mean, really pr prepare for that. You know, we we had this nice linear trajectory of growth at the company that was very, very good prior to COVID. And then COVID hit and it was just wham, it was a hold on for dear life, you know. And so it was it was a lot of scaling to meet up with the demand. And I wish some of that stuff had been planned better ahead of time. So it wouldn't be this mad rush scramble. But in hindsight, it's it's all worked out. You know, 10 years ago, you had a vision based on a need that you had the needs have changed. Mm -hmm. They've accelerated and grown. If you were going to articulate what need Kajabi fills today, you know, in a couple sentences, could you do that? 
Yeah, absolutely. I, I think most everybody on this planet has some knowledge that would be valuable for other people uh, to, to hear. And without Kajabi or a tool like it, they can't get that out and they can't monetize that and they can't really share that that lifelong learning that they have in their heads with other people. And so that's what we're here for. And, and we realize that it's not just the aim to for our customers to have a side hustle or just to sell a quick course, but it's to build a business, to, to really be an entrepreneur themselves and, and to build a knowledge business around uh, what's in their head. Yeah, it's funny because you're an engineer and I see your business as a re-engineering business uh, because on so many aspects, you allow a re-engineering of serious institutions, yeah. uh, ones that have been around for centuries, including our educational institutions. Sure. I'm being approached by so many people uh, where you've had B school, which they're now calling E school, yeah. and being in the space as an entrepreneur, uh, not having a platform where Kajabi allows me to create my own Dave Meltzer e-school that actually could have a greater attendance than the large institutions that my kids are going to right now exactly. without having to pay $83,000 a year. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> so really strong. Where, where do you see education? Because mm -hmm. you are in the education business uh, in, in essence, the, yeah. new, the new education. Sure. Where do you see it going in the next 10 years? I think it's really personality and brand centric. So, so just like you said, you know, it, it's it's people building businesses around their personality and their style and their what, whatever it is, their teaching style or what information they specifically have to share. And it's less about the big institutions. So, who knows what's going to happen with with traditional education institutions in the future? But we want to be poised to just help anybody, whoever they are, to build a business around who they are. And I know I promise not to ask too many difficult questions, but I have to ask this question. So I apologize up front. Audience is a big uh, issue, I think, meaning that I don't think the human mind can grasp how big the audience is. Mm -hmm. You know, I've worked in traditional media for so long and you would get these, you know, media kits with, you know, Comcast has this big of an audience and yeah. this radio state, Angel Radio had this big of an audience. And it was one thing to have an audience or a reach and then it was another thing to engage. Yep. I don't think people can fathom how big the audience is. And in the business that you're in, you can take these individual brands, courses, uh, content that exists and, and they've always exist. You know, I remember one of my mentors, Dr. Wayne Dyer, mm -hmm. who started in Port Washington in Long Island. And he started at a junior college in like one of those, you know, penny saver courses that you would do in person. Yeah. And I always think about like, here's a guy that's a world thought leader, changed my life from the content that he's provided. And he started, you know, probably at a night school at a junior <laughs> college with 12 people. Sure. And he valued it. Yeah. And everybody understood it. I'm not sure. I mean, you, you, I know you've doubled in size. I'm not sure that even you fathom how big no. this audience is, that there's a ton of Wayne Dyers out there that now have access to 4.6 billion people. And if one of them catches on fire using Kajabi, your platform becomes, you know, this ridiculous platform for more and more people to utilize. It, it's self-fulfilling prophecy. What challenges do you face of trying to fathom or gather the real the realistic approach that there's billions of people that eventually may need Kajabi? Yeah, I mean, obviously the engineering team has their own issues in terms of, <laughs> of the scale for sure. Uh, but for me, I'm just I'm always blown away by by the size of the audience, right? Like I look at some of our customers, and you would think they were in the the most nichiest of niches, and and they've got they're making tons of money, and they've got a big audience. People teaching knitting, people teaching blacksmithing, popping pimples, yeah, right, everything, yeah, <laughs> foraging for mushrooms, and and just just this stuff that I didn't even know existed, and and they've got audience, and they're making good money on it and and uh and so yeah it's just it's coming to grips with the fact that there are a lot of people out there that that are gravitating towards certain teachers and certain topics and you know also one of the other aspects that you have a great insight on is just commerce you yeah. know and the forms of payment which is a crucial part of what you do is understanding merchant services and all of these do you have uh, a perspective now on where we're going with electronic payment and different types of payment? Mm. Do you see a ubiquity of commerce worldwide or do you still see credit card transactions being the primary source of transaction? Great question. I, I don't know. I, I, I would 
I would think that we're going to see a lot more electronic payments. And, and I don't know, I'm not necessarily saying crypto is going to become commonplace to buy, you know, courses online or anything, but I, I think we're poised for some kind of shift. But, you know, so we just want to be everywhere. And, and, and right now, obviously, we're, we're credit card centric and things like that and, and the PayPal's, but we're open to anything. Where does most of the business fall off? And how does Kajabi address it? You know, one of, for me at least, being in this space and being a huge fan of your solution, you know, it's the retention from the yeah. beginning to the end that's yeah. crucial. Because if they don't actually utilize it, I could have all the top funnel people in the world, but your platform seems to be the best at utilizing and retaining and, and uh, you know, converting. Yeah. Uh, that where, where do you succeed in that? Because I see a huge difference compared to anybody else that Kajabi does such a great job of retaining and converting. Well, I'll give you the key to our retention, right? The, the secret to our retention is success, right? If somebody makes even a dollar on the platform selling some kind of knowledge, they're going to stay. Uh, I mean, the magic point is when they reach their first $1,000, they, if you look at the graph, like they're just retained forever. They're not, why would they leave? You know, because they've made money. And so it's our job to realize that not everybody's going to make money. That would be, that would be an amazing thing if it happened, but there's not an easy button to, to make money online, you know, that you push the button and the money just comes out of the screen. You know, it is a business. And so we want to train people to, to get out of their own way and to realize, okay, it's not an easy button. You're building a business, you have to work, but it can be a lucrative one, you know, if you, if you really stick with it. And so we train people and coach people and, and encourage them. And, and we've got this Kajabi hero program where we celebrate the wins and the milestones that our customers achieve. And we send them swag and we talk about them on social media and we really make them feel that like they're a part of something. I think that acknowledgement is really important because, you know, coming from someone who has switched over to Kajabi, right, mm -hmm. who made way more than that on the other platform. So it wasn't just the money, mm -hmm. but there was yeah. no acknowledgement, no customer service, yeah. uh, some other things that we find that Kajabi's much better at, uh, which yeah. is why we also like having you in here. We're going to get some new tips for us. <laughs> um, speaking of which, what tips do you have for someone just starting out? Uh, they're in their backyard right now mm -hmm. and they're cutting holes in PVC because <laughs> yeah. it's the pandemic creating, you know, slippery slide for their kid. Yeah. And they now say to themselves, I'm going to teach people how to do this. What tip would you give for someone just starting out? Yeah, I mean, I a lot of people around the office, well, virtually now, since we're not in the office, but they, they joke because my favorite word is grit. So, it, you know, it sounds like a cliche, but just just have the grit. Like if, if you've got a passion and you think that it's valuable for other people, pursue it and just don't give up. And, and you know, it might be hard at the beginning, right? It might be hard to find the audience. Where where do people that would gravitate towards my message, where do they hang out? How do I get in touch with them? How do I bring them into my universe? And, and so I, I would really say that um, it just not just follow your passion, but if, if you if you have something and an idea, what, what's holding you back? Why wouldn't you try? And why wouldn't you, you know, not just quit your day job and, and go all online, but why wouldn't you spend a couple hours every night just tinkering with it and trying to make it work? What was your wife's biggest fear? I can tell your great attitude. You yeah. and I share the same entrepreneurial spirit. And yeah. I talk about, you know, different things my wife had said to me, when you're looking at someone also that risks so much that I lost everything at one time in my 30s and I do things differently now over the last 15 years. But what would your wife say her greatest fear is even today? Ooh, today it's it's way different at the beginning it was just logistics it's like we've got three small kids you're working from home now you're not going to be home how she do i get, like why me <laughs> yeah how do i get three people three different places you know um ooh, that's a great question about now what her greatest fear is i think i think maybe it would just be you know when when is when is enough success enough and and you know wow. like is is uh you know are you sacrificing quality time with the family now uh then when you wouldn't really need to that is a perfect way to end because I will tell you, that's why I use Kajabi because someone who retired in his 30s and because of it lost everything hmm. because I had no purpose or passion or whatever. And then had to, as I became successful again, figure out because my wife is someone who's when's enough enough and I'm on the other side. Well, I can't stop because I the idle hands are not Dave Meltzer's treat. Yep. Um, companies like Kajabi allow me to have a balance where yeah. just like you eased into this great acceleration, I can maintain the acceleration and still be present for 
uh, you know, I'm 53 years old for a 60 to 80 year old, 80 to 100, 100 to 120 year old life. And because of Kajabi, I'm able to build a brand and make more money, help more people and have more fun with my life. And so I actually, because of your platform, have an enough, enough strategy. When, When is enough, enough strategy, which is one of my wife's greatest fears as well because we've lived through the tragedy yeah. of enough was enough and I didn't handle it very well. So I'm especially appreciative of Kajabi and that story about your wife really resonates with me. Uh, Kenny, thank you so much. Thanks I appreciate so much, all the insight, all the education. If you haven't checked out Kajabi, do it. This is a platform that allows you to capture, modify, amplify and perpetuate your lessons and most importantly, even monetize it. 